A Model of Christian Charity by John Winthrop. Between April and June of 1630, a fleet of 12 ships carrying roughly 1,000 Puritan men, women, and children sailed westward across the Atlantic to their new home in Massachusetts Bay. During the voyage, their elected governor, John Winthrop, delivered a sermon aboard the Abarella. To succeed in their perilous enterprise, he said, they must be knitted together in this work as one man. He emphasized the care of the public must oversway all private aspects. He reminded them that they had entered into covenant with God. Failure to walk in his ways, Winthrop cautioned, would destroy their fledging religious community. Here is the conclusion of Winthrop's sermon. When God gives a special commission, he looks to have it strictly observed in every article. Thus stands the cause between God and us. We are entered into covenant with him for this work. Now the Lord shall be pleased to hear us and bring us in peace to this place we desire. Then he hath ratified this covenant and will expect a strict performance of the articles contained in it. But if we shall neglect the observation of these articles and dissembling with God, shall fail fall to embrace this present world and prosecute our carnal intentions seeking great things for ourselves and our posterity the lord will surely break out in wrath against us be revenged of such a perjured people and make us known the price of the breach of such covenant now the only way to avoid this shipwreck and to provide for our posterity is to follow the counsel of Micah, to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with our God. For this end, we must be knit together in this work as one man. We must entertain each other in brotherly affection. We must be willing to abridge ourselves of our super, superlities for the supply of others' necessity. We must uphold a familiar comrades together in all meekness, gentleness, patience, and liberty. We must delight in each other, make others' conditions our own, rejoice together, mourn together, labor and suffer together, always having before our eyes our commission and community, the work, our community, as members of the same body. So shall we keep the unity of the spirit and bond of peace. The Lord will be our God and delight to dwell among us, his own people, and will command a blessing upon us in all ways so that we shall see much more of his wisdom, power, goodness, and truth than formerly we have been acquainted with. We shall find that the God of Israel is among us. When 10 of us shall be able to resist thousands of our enemies, when he shall make us a praise and glory that men shall say of succeeding plantations, the Lord make it like that of New England. For we must consider that we shall be a city upon a hill. The light, the eyes of all people are upon us so that if we shall deal falsely with our God in this work we have undertaken and so cause him to withdraw his present help from us, we shall be made a story and byword through the world. We shall open the mouths of enemies to speak evil of the ways of God and professors for God's sake. We shall shame the face of many of God's worthy servants and cause their prayers to be turned into curses upon us till we be consumed out of the good land whether we are going. with the exhortations of Moses, thy faithful servant of the Lord, in his fat last farewell to Israel, Deuteronomy 30. Beloved, there is now set forth before us life and death, good and evil, and that we are commanded, commanded this day to love the Lord and to love each other, to walk in his way and keep his commandments and his ordinance and his laws and the articles of our covenant with him that we may live and be multiplied and that the Lord our God may bless us in this land whither we go to possess it. But if our heart shall turn away so that we will not obey, but be seduced and worship other gods, our pleasures and profits and serve them, it is propounded unto us this day. We shall surely perish out of the good land whether we pass over this vast sea to possess it. Therefore, let us choose life that we and our seed may live by obeying his voice, cleaving to him, for he is our life and our prosperity.